In the year 1516, a man named Erasmus restored the true Greek text from Antioch to the people of Europe. Two men would make translations for their people from this text. Martin Luther in Germany and William Tyndale in England. Both men had to disobey the laws of the Roman Catholic Church to make their translations. The Bible that William Tyndale began would eventually become the greatest book in the history of the world. One evening, William Tyndale was having a discussion with a Catholic bishop on the authority of Scripture. The bishop said that he respected the word of the Pope more than the Bible. To this, William Tyndale replied, I defy the Pope and all his laws. If God spare my life ere many years, I will cause a boy that driveth the plow shall know more of the Scripture than thou dost. Tyndale's desire was to make the Bible available in English instead of the Latin Bibles used by the Catholic clergy to keep the people in bondage. In 1534 he translated the New Testament into English from the Greek text of Erasmus. In 1536 William Tyndale was executed by the Roman Catholic Church. His crime? Giving the people of England the Word of God in their own language. A tyrannical church like Rome could not have their authority undermined by an English Bible. William Tyndale had to be killed if the Pope wanted to remain in control of the people of England. William Tyndale's dying words were, Lord, open the King of England's eyes. He was then strangled and his body set on fire. In the year 1604, King James I of England authorized a translation of the Holy Bible into the English language. Fifty-four of Europe's greatest scholars were gathered together for this monumental task which would take seven years to complete. Men like Lancelot Andrews who could speak fifteen languages and wrote his own private devotional books in Greek. Henry Seville was Greek and mathematical tutor to Queen Elizabeth. John Overall was an expert on the early church fathers. These 54 men were separated into six groups, two at Cambridge, two at Westminster, and two at Oxford. The translators would use the Greek text of Stephens, which was an updated copy of the Erasmus text. This Greek text is known today as the Textus Receptus. Over the next seven years, these men would translate and design the greatest book of all time. Each book of the Bible had to pass 14 tests before it was accepted as scripture. The authorized version was completed in 1611. This great Bible is commonly known today as the King James Version. William Tyndale's dying prayer to God had been answered. English-speaking people all over the world finally had the Word of God in their own language. <laughs>